A 10 millimeter Glock handgun, a significant amount of ammunition, methamphetamine, heroin, cocaine, drug scales, baggies, and paraphernalia, which Damn. is consistent with the sale and distribution of narcotics. Overall, though, That's Bellevue crazy. police say they received thousands of videos and tips from the public, and they believe this proved crucial in identifying many of the suspects during that day. Police also say they have close to 100 people that they have identified in connection to the looting in late May. Bad. At the news conference today, Police Chief Steve Milet says detectives will be contacting those people, quote, very soon. <laughs> As a warning to all them people that were <clears throat> caught on CCTV. That dude had an AK-47 with a drum bell and a lot of ammunition. Like, I'm talking about, yeah, like three... Let's go. Let's go look at it. Why am I even talking? Let's go look. Let's go check it out. All right. Let's. Uh, Ten millimeter Glock handgun. A... Look at that. Woo! That's a narc. That dude had drugs and everything. That's crazy, huh? They got him because he was stealing. Look at that. This guy. Significant amount of ammunition, methamphetamine, heroin, cocaine, drug scales, baggies, and paraphernalia, which is consistent with the sale and distribution of narcotics. <laughs> That's crazy. They caught him because that dude was looting. Damn. All right. Racial tensions in Chicago are high. People in Little Village say they've seen an increase in Latino gang activity against African Americans who live here and who come through. But the people who march today condemn that violence and are calling on black and brown communities to unite. That's what's up. Yes, there was violence. Yes, brown people hurt black people. And yes, the police stood there and did nothing. A call for peace and solidarity as several hundred people march under the arch, welcoming all to Little Village. Our lives as brown people is connected to the lives of black people. We will never get respect until black people get respect. Organizers say there have been instances of increased Latino gang activity in Little Village targeting African Americans over the past few days. It's important for us to, to be here to denounce Rebecca Martinez says she wants anyone with violence on their mind to know. We believe that black lives matter. And when they begin to matter, our lives will also matter. Justin White is out here marching too, for peace. Living in a little village, I'm very exhausted. I'm afraid for my life, but I need to make my voice as heard as it can be because I love the people in this neighborhood and I love my black people as well. 
So coming together right now is the most important thing that we can do. Black people like myself right now, we're definitely not the enemy. We're trying to make everybody come together as much as we can so we can live together in love as a peaceful community. Activists and community members hoping for peace on the streets for all people. The COVID-19 surge continues here in Southern California. In L.A. County, more than 2,600 new cases were reported as total cases passed 127,000, but hospitalizations dropped below 2,000 since yesterday. Riverside is reporting the biggest one-day total since March, 1,400 new cases. Orange County reported more than 1,100 new cases today. And Ventura County now tops more than 4,000 cases for the first time. As the number of new daily cases climbs past 50,000 again, there are new signs that reopening too soon is having dire consequences. Take a look at this chart. It shows the change in average daily cases since reopening. Florida was one of the first to ease restrictions, and now it is one of the hardest hit. And now hear this. Dr. Fauci says some states may need to pause, consider rolling back the reopenings. 13 states now reporting issues with testing availability and access. That includes Arizona, where one-third of the COVID tests are coming back positive. Matt Gutman starts us off in Phoenix. Good morning, Matt. Hey, good morning, George. The numbers over the past couple of weeks have been mind-numbing, but what is plain as day, even in the dark here, is the need for testing. That car got here at midnight. There are already dozens here, even though they know they probably won't get the results back for two weeks. And when public health experts see this, they say the testing system is collapsing. This morning, a dire warning from top medical expert Dr. Anthony Fauci recommending Sunbelt hotspots like Texas, Arizona, and Florida pause their reopenings. And there are some times when, despite the guidelines and the recommendations to open up carefully and prudently, some states skipped over those and just opened up too quickly. This is the nation's coronavirus testing crisis playing out in this epic gridlock. Cars lining up for hours. This may look like a parking lot, but it's a testing site. Now, they've administered over 1,300 tests here today, but there are going to be hundreds of people back there who don't make the cutoff. Hundreds in line by 1 a.m. Is it worth waking up at midnight to be out here before 1 a.m.? I don't have a choice. Because you don't have insurance. Correct. And I'm not going to get on the back of the line like I did last week. And then not get tested. Correct. One car overheating and bursting into flames and Holy hundreds shit. had to be turned away. I had a gentleman who was in tears because he had waited so long and for so many days, and that's what breaks my heart. On Thursday, Arizona Governor Doug Ducey addressing COVID publicly for the first time in over a week, but not offering much change. Today, there's a new executive order that will limit indoor dining to less than 50% occupancy. You want to be in places where you can limit the number of people. For those waiting in the pre-dawn heat, that's not enough. As a country, when you compare us to other countries, I don't think you can say we're doing great. I mean, we're just not. In Florida, more than 50 hospitals have zero ICU beds available. This graph by the New York Times showing a nearly 1,400% increase in average daily COVID cases compared to when Florida reopened about two months ago. And overnight, Miami-Dade School Superintendent, the fourth largest school district in the country, telling ABC News, despite the governor's order, his schools will not reopen until the county enters phase two. Now, Arizona and Phoenix specifically are considered one of the COVID capitals of the world. And for the first time in nine days, Governor Doug Ducey coming out, briefing the public about the coronavirus. Coronavirus and his big announcement is limiting indoor dining to under 50 percent. This at a time when public health experts say the only way to stop the virus is to shut states like this down completely. So we, here we have a video where the Minneapolis mayor. Uh, he gets scolded, basically. Scolded, yeah. So check it out.
There's a lot of people there. Damn, that sucks. That is the mayor of Minneapolis.